During the 18th and 19th centuries, science exploded at unprecedented rates. For scientists, the resulting discoveries provided many answers, but for the common man, they inspired only more questions. Advances made in sociology, statistical mechanics, astronomy, and geology led to discomforting theories that forced humanity to face difficult but fundamental questions. Is our existence as a species significant or merely one oddity among many in the universe? Do I as an individual possess free will, or is my fate sealed by the laws of nature? As scientific and religious forces competed to provide society with adequate answers, people generally indifferent to such high-minded debates could not help but wonder if new radical ideas could answer life's hardest questions. Man is seen to be an enigma only as an individual, and in mass he is a mathematical problem. Highly complex systems, such as people, had thus far eluded the grasp of scientific understanding. By the middle of the 19th century, statistics came to rise as the most promising tool for understanding both society and nature. Some advocates for these new methods, such as Lambert Quetelet, argued that statistics could be used to analyze and predict human behavior. For the common man, this was a discomforting prospect. If a statistical analysis were to predict a certain number of occurrences for a particular human behavior, then such a claim inherently begged the question of whether people were still in possession of free will. If on average 10 men kill themselves each year, are those suicides the product of individual choices or the result of unforeseen dice rolls? In an 1848 publication, Quetelet expressed his view on the subject. This probability may be considered. The measure of the apparent tendency to marriage of a Belgian aged 25 to 30. I say apparent tendency intentionally to avoid confusion with the real tendency, which may be quite different. One man may have a real tendency to marry without ever marrying. Another may marry without having the least propensity to marriage. The distinction is essential. Quetelet, like most of his contemporaries, applauded statistics for its utility, but rejected the notion that statistics could ever supplant the notion of free will. Not surprisingly, statistics became instrumental to explaining certain physical systems, particularly the behavior of gases. James Clerk Maxwell was the leading pioneer of statistical mechanics, a methodology that is used even today to describe the behavior of complex systems composed of many randomly acting particles. Maxwell argued that although the velocity of any individual gas molecule may be unknown, the average velocity could still be quantified. Furthermore, only the average velocity was necessary to describe properties of the system, such as temperature or pressure. While scientists used the assumptions of statistical mechanics to develop gas laws and other physical models, common people were bewildered by the idea that individual gas particles could act randomly, without purpose or adherence to any particular natural order. To think that mere particles seemed to exhibit free will was frightening. For if mindless gas molecules had free will, what separated the human mind from that of trivial matter? Statistics provided the necessary tools to describe both the laws of society and the laws of nature. But in doing so, this new approach to science also caused humanity to ponder the concepts of determinism and free will. Though statistics provided an answer for science, it only inspired questions for philosophy. We find no vestige of a beginning, no prospect of an end. Man, in his pursuit of knowledge, has been grappling with God's focus of attention since the beginning of time. Or has he? Hutton has time on Earth going back billions of years. Darwin suggested that we didn't come from clay and water with a spare rib over the course of a few days. And Galileo, Kepler, and Copernicus took Earth out of the center and jointly crushed Aristotle's theories along with Newton's laws delivering the final blow. Powerful telescopes revealed vast expanses of space containing apparently never-ending vistas of stars and other planetary systems. As you look into space, deeper and deeper, you are looking further and further back into time. Grasping that Earth is a mere particle on the scale of the universe brought about many conflicting ideas about whether or not humans were the intended recipient of God's grace. In fact, it questioned God's existence entirely. At the same time scientists were looking out into the universe for answers, others were looking into the Earth's crust. Explaining why sedimentary rocks could be found on continents was a major problem for geologists. Two theories arose. The Neptunus, named after the Roman god of the sea, claimed the Earth was once a vast ocean, 
and the Plutonus, named after the god of the underworld, argued the Earth had several violent upheavals that pushed parts of the crust up and other parts down. James Hutton was the most influential Plutonus, who imagined a continuous and very slow geologic cycle where rocks were eroded by wind, water, and other rocks, making it impossible for the Earth to have been as young as the Bible states. Clearly, Earth's history didn't begin on Sunday, December 23rd, 4004 BC. Geologists and mathematicians alike agree that the Earth was formed around 4.5 billion years ago. Compress, for example, the entire 4.5 billion years of geologic time into a single year. On that scale, the oldest rocks date from about mid-March. Living things first appeared in the sea in May. Land plants and animals emerged in late November, and the widespread swamps that formed the Pennsylvanian coal deposits flourished for about four days in early December. Dinosaurs became dominant in mid-December, but disappear on the 26th at about the same time the Rocky Mountains were first uplifted. Man-like creatures appeared sometime during the evening of the 31st, and the most recent continental ice sheets began to recede from the Great Lakes area and from northern Europe about 1 minute and 15 seconds before midnight on the 31st. Rome ruled the western world for 5 seconds from 1159.45 seconds to 1159.50 seconds. Columbus discovered America 3 seconds before midnight and the science of geology was born with the writings of James Hutton just slightly more than one second before the end of our eventful years of years.